Hey, I'm Llewellyn Falco, and this is my Agile Thought of the Day. Today I want to talk about lambdas and having them in Java 6 or 1.6, depending on how you look at the numbers. Uh, it was Java 1 this week, and one of the big announcements was what's coming down in the new version of the JDK. And one of the things that we've been talking about and hearing and promising for years was lambdas. Lambdas and closures are finally making it in. And what we heard this week is no. No, they are not. They're not going to make it into this iteration. They're going to make it into the next iteration, and this iteration isn't even going to come here for another eight months or so. So this got me a little bit perturbed, and I ended up creating lambdas using the regular Java syntax of 1.6 right now. But before we get to that, let's take a look at why you would even want lambdas. So in programming, we have this situation a lot of times where you have these two things and the blue is different. It's, it's different, but this green block is exactly the same. And you want to remove that duplication and you do it by creating a method. And we've all done this hundreds of times each day. But sometimes you see this situation where you have nice similarities, but in the middle of it, there's this piece that's different. And the question is, how do you remove that duplication that's surrounding something. And the answer, of course, is that you create a method and that method takes a lambda and that lambda allows you to pass in the unique piece for each one. So this is why lambdas are great. They really allow you to remove the duplication in your code. Now, why is this agile? The reason it's agile is because the number one principle of agile is you want to reduce the cost of a mistake. And if you can reduce something where you're, you had it duplicated five times, and now it, you reduce that duplication to just one place, if it turns out you need to change it, which means essentially you made a mistake. You didn't do it perfect the first time. So when you need to change it, you not only need to change it in one place instead of five places, which in and of itself is faster and cheaper, and is usually much, much cheaper because the fact that you'd find all five is sometimes hard to do. A lot of times you only find four of the places and you don't actually do it for a while and so it actually ends up costing a lot more. Great, so that's why it's Agile. This is why you want it. Let's go take a look at what I've actually done. So first of all, uh, just an empty project here using just the jar file, no fancy things, nothing happening in the Java CC, nothing happening on the JDK, nothing happening in terms Oh, like special hacks or things, anything with the bytecode, nothing like that. This is just a simple um, jar file you can add to any project. So I'm going to create a new. That I'm going to create a new test. Whoosh, test case, and let's call this a grid test. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to use approval tests in here. So let's give a nice reporter. So I'm going to do a use reporter of diff reporter just makes it really easy to see whatever our outputs are. And now let's go and make a test. And then I want to test a grid. And this is going to be very straightforward. I'm going to create a string, uh, so using the grid and lambdas, to print out a 5 by 5 grid. And they're just going to be empty spaces. right? And then I am just going to approve that grid. So let's run this. I should see a five by five grid. Yay, five by five grid. Cool. So next, what I want to do is something maybe a little more sophisticated than just put the same thing over and over in the same place. Let's make a diagonal down the grid. So to do that, I need to do something different if it's a diagonal. That's a little piece of code, not a lot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a lambda here. And in this case, it's a lambda that takes two parameters, right? So a func two, and it's going to take an integer and an integer. It's going to return a string. Now I need to prep this with a possible integer. So say zero and another possible integer, and then I can pass other things here. But right now I don't have any. So this is saying I have a lambda that takes two integers and returns a string. And now I'm going to use these double curlies to create an anonymous constructor. And inside of that, I'm going to say return. And return, I'm not going to use the full keyword because, again, I'm not changing anything to the structures. I'm just going to say ret. 
And what is it that I am going to return? Well, so I wanted them if the if they're on a diagonal. So that means the x and the y are the same. So I'm going to say a, which is the first parameter, is equal to the second parameter. Well, then I want to return an x. Otherwise, ooh, mouse jump there. Otherwise, I want to return an O. I'll make that bigger so you can see the whole thing. All right, so print me a 5x5 five five grid, and for each one, decide whether it's an X and O based on whether they're equal to each other. So let's run this and see it work. Great. Oh, a little bit hard to see there. Instead of doing an O, let's just do an empty space. Great. So now I have X's down the diagonal. Very good helpful, uh, but a lot of times you want to do something just a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, so in this case, let's create a new hash map. And this is going to be with points and strings. I'm going to hold on to that. Oop. And then let's add some stuff in here. So let's put a new point and in this case let's go over two on the first row and right there I'm gonna put a king okay. and then right next to the king I'm gonna put his trusty queen okay. and now I want to use what's in here so instead of doing this piece right here I'm gonna to want to say map dot get and for what I'm gonna get is gonna be a new point because that's the way I did the keys that takes a and b okay. so that's all nice and simple but unfortunately you're seeing that map is red and that's because if you're gonna use something inside of an anonymous class Java requires it to be final Great. Okay, so now that goes away but it's still not there when you run this, this will fail unless you go and tell it, hey, I'm also using this map thing. Otherwise, it won't know what the value of map is in the recursive calls. So if we run this, boom, here we can see our king and queen sitting nice on top of the board. Great. So first of all, OK, if you like it, what do you need to do to use it? Well, it turns out you need to do very little. If you just go to the approval test, so approvaltest.com, and click on the downloads, you will see in the thing there's a lambda.java file. It's actually a fairly small file, and you just it's a jar file. You just include it, and you're good to go. And then lastly, let's just take one quick look at what the syntax is. So one of the principles of Agile is you know, it's better to have a good plan today than a perfect plan tomorrow. And in this case, you know, the next iteration was two years off, so I would rather have something I can use today that gives me closures. And so because of that, I'm, I'm stuck with the syntax that I have, which means I'm not giving the perfect syntax. There's definitely some limitations to the implementation that I've done here, but you'll see it's fairly robust. So this is the syntax that is required by, by Java that I'm working with. So the first is, the, the little piece of code I have here is a final double multiplier 1.4, and then I have a lambda underneath it that takes an integer and returns a double, and in this case, just returns. So if I pass it 2, it's going to pass me back 2.8. And so let's look here. First, this new F1, what does that really mean? A really new F1 integer double. This is saying this is a function that returns a double. It's a function that has one parameter. That first parameter is an integer, and it is going to be labeled a. You do not get a choice in that. And again, this is working with the requirements that they're set upon. So uh, this is the in value. It's an integer that transfers. You have to give it an instance so it can do its first one. And then here, you can now use it as an a. And then, because we're using multiplier, it's required that it's a final. And then you can call it whatever you want. This can be whatever variable name you want, but then you have to pass it into here. And then that needs to be passed in to here. So nice and easy. I hope uh, that you use it. I hope you like it. 
try it out. I have a lot more coming down the pipe. Uh, from earlier, about a year and a half ago, I came up with an extension method thing. It turns out extension methods are really useful to use with this, but one thing at a time. Um, also, right now, it's in a very limited state. I just have F1 and F2. Eventually, it will go out to 10, and it will go uh, actions in place. On top of that, there are query methods like select and where and min and max, uh, but soon we'll get a more robust on query, so we'll also get order buys and stuff like that. We'll also get the ability to do it in parallel. Uh, look for those videos coming probably in about a week's time. Thanks very much.